You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. For the community, by the community. Thank you for joining me for an ultra special summer themed lobster filled wine filled episode that was a mouthful of two guys and a lot of wine i am joined by two friends and a author who just did this fantastic book called lobster rolls of new england and i gotta say i'm very excited about this show jim's not here he's still up in boston so he's missing a good one but it's probably good because it's more lobster for the three of us so i'd like to introduce sally lerman the author of this book friend and uh just all around great person and a neighbor of mine India Liddell, who's also both a lobster lover and a wine lover. So thank you both for joining me today. Thanks for having us. Yeah. And uh, I'm very curious, uh, Sally, obviously being a New Englander, as we are. Well, you're not really a New Englander, but you are now. No, not really. What made you get into lobster rolls? Why lobster rolls to start off with? Well, I just started eating them, and I realized they weren't all created equal. So I started, you know, documenting them. So for my own benefit, taking pictures, writing notes of which ones were good, and then decided to share that information with other people to save them from buying inferior lobster rolls. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because it's a lot like wine. You don't want to buy inferior yeah, wine. Yeah, exactly. And that's exactly. It's sort of along the same line. We, we might have some inferior wine tonight. We don't know. We haven't tasted ours yet. But, uh, <laughs> and I, I know, like wine, lobsters, some of the best lobsters, obviously, in the world come from New England. And uh, what have you found in your... Well, first of all, how long did it take you to, to do this book? Well, I've been traveling and testing lobster rolls for probably... 10 years. Wow. Uh, but the blog has been, I've been doing lobstergal.com since uh, 2012. And so that's when I started actually putting up all my pictures and thoughts and tried over 225 at last count. And wow. just from this past weekend, I'm over that for sure. <laughs> wow, that is a lot of lobster. So. And I know both you ladies are big fans of the Sauvignon Blanc. As I am, I'm a little bit more open-minded with my whites in the summertime. <laughs> And I know you guys are strictly Sauvignon Blanc fans, Pretty so uh, we'll be tasting our first one in a few moments. But do you find, at least here in Connecticut, what are some of the main characteristics, without going into too much detail, what separates a Connecticut lobster roll from, say, a Cape Cod lobster roll? Are they, are they similar? Are they, what's the difference between the two? Well, typically the difference is that the Connecticut style of lobster roll is considered like warm with butter on it. Um, the main style is considered cold with mayonnaise, but there's a lot of variation. There, you'll find both in both places and anywhere in between. A lot of places offer both options, so it just sort of depends, and uh, they vary widely everywhere. Well, I, I will say I'm a, sort of more of a fan of the cold one. I, I know Indy and I both love Newport. We're there quite often, and uh, there's a lot of Newport has a lot of great lobster rolls. They I'm not do. sure where you get yours from, but uh, there's flows, there's numerous other ones. There are, there are, and there's the famous twin lobster roll deal down at First Beach. Which is a great deal, and they're pretty damn good, actually. They actually have are. Have you tried good. that one? I haven't, no. I have oh, Sally yes. Lerman. You'll have to come, <laughs> yeah, have to come try have. The, the twin lobster roll deal. All right, I will. Well, why that lobster looks tempting right now. I think, uh, why don't we take a sip of our first Sauvignon Blanc tonight? Okay. And uh, this, is a, this is an interesting one. I've just found this one, it's called Winoc. It's a California. It is a fresh, juicy, at least that's what I wrote down this, fresh and juicy. It's got sort of a citrus, pineapple, nectarine. That's what I found out, find when I taste this. Now I know you guys are a little bit more particular, so let's take a sip and see what we think. All right. I like it. I think it's, it's balanced. It's not too uh, overpowering on the citrus side. It's not. I actually find it quite light. Yeah, maybe a little too light. Yeah. <laughs> now, see, that's interesting going into lobster. When you go out and look for lobster, when you have lobster, do you generally drink wine or are you just go in cold so you don't want to affect the palate at all? 
I don't take it too seriously. <laughs> <laughs> as we don't hear on this show, as you, as you folks know. Just sort of drink whatever's around. <laughs> well, a lot of times they don't, you, they don't even serve alcohol when you get to some of these smaller they don't, places. No. You bring your own. Or, but I usually eat the lobster before I actually. Or drink suffer anything. through without it. Suffer through without <laughs> it, yeah. Never can tell. Well, most Sauvignon Blancs would pair very well yeah, with seafood. Yeah, something citrusy usually works nicely. Now, I would say for this one, um, I don't find this over citrusy though, which some people like. I know my wife Carrie loves Sauvignon Blancs also. She likes a very powerful citrusy oriented Sauvignon Blanc. This is definitely not an overpowering citrusy Sauvignon no. Blanc. I think it's nice. It, it, it is very light compared to what Sally and I generally drink, but right. it, it's nice. It's light. has a little bite at the end. It does. It does have a little bite. And actually, I think this is actually might be a good starter Sauvignon Blanc in the evening. Sort of starting off a little sure. on the smooth side. It's a little quiet. <laughs> you don't want to bring out the big pops of uh, citrus right away. So this might be something as a, an early starter very nice. for a Sauvignon Blanc. Great. Now, Indias, I did tell you I did not bring a spit bowl, uh, so you have to finish sorry, the whole I'll glass. <laughs> That's not a problem. So the price point on this one is between $13 and $15. You can find this locally. Like I said, I just tried this one uh, about two weeks ago. And uh, it, to me, it's a good, smooth Sauvignon Blanc. Very and, nice. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm going to give this one a, a thumbs up. Yeah, I will. I think we, are we allowed to vote after? We have all Yes, three. you can. You can yeah, absolutely vote can. after. Yeah. after. It is, it's, it's, I wouldn't turn it away. I wouldn't turn it away, no. That's good. Sure. So speaking of turning away, Sally, what are some of the more not so good lobster rolls in the regions of uh, New England that you came across. Well, you don't have to name the names. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't like to name no, names. No, obviously. But whenever you find ones that use previously frozen meat, that's always the first question I ask is, do you use previously frozen lobster meat in your lobster roll? That's usually a sign that, not that it is bad, it's just that a lot of them charge the same amount as they do for fresh picked, and that's, in my opinion, not really financially worth it. So can you tell the difference sometimes? Now or? I can. It did take a while to be able to just Is tell the difference on one bite. Texture, taste, both. Texture, it's a little more watery. Somebody described it as <coughs> wet cardboard to me once, <laughs> and I thought that was not too far off. Um, but some are better than others, and uh, even the fresh picked meat is different depending on how they cook it, how long they cook it. But overall, I'd say that is not ideal. And I know the bread makes a big difference too, right? Bread is a huge, just like in a sandwich. Uh, bread in a lobster roll is, is probably pretty paramount to Absolutely. enjoying the flavor. Yeah, I know a lot of people prefer the standard kind of hot dog roll type hot thing. Hot dog roll, wonder bread type thing. I'm not really a fan of that personally. I prefer more of a bakery type bread. That's something fresh. I feel like lobster deserves a really great bread. A soft bread? Yeah, yeah. Still white bread, still top split is great. I just like to see it more bakery fresh. Toasted? Buttery grilled. Buttery grilled. A buttery grill does work sometimes, mm. you're right. Lots yeah. of butter grilled. Yeah, you got to figure if you're going to eat lobster, why not have as much butter as possible. In fact, I made one today, it. to be honest with you. Did you really? Yeah, At I got home. some Harford Baking Company oh, bread. so good. I actually got pull apart buns, and I cut them in half, and then grilled them. We only have that one tonight. I don't think that's going to be <laughs> enough, guys. Now, I'm just trying to determine when we'll take our first bite of that, and I'm not sure. You know what we'll do? Maybe we'll do a quick sampling of the wines. Right. And okay. then we'll determine which one you th then we'll the experts will. And uh, the next one we're going to try is a long neck. Now, this is a South African. Uh, I tend to be very, uh, find most South African wines very favorable on my palate, huh. um, especially on the white side. Now, this one uh, is actually kind of cute. It's uh, got a little giraffe. That is actually a real giraffe at their vineyard. They adopted. Her name is Leela. Really? And uh, it was an injured giraffe, and they have been taking care of it for quite some time. Sweet. And all these are stainless steel uh, age, by the way. So this is just a simple straight up Sauvignon Blanc. There should be no surprises here. This should really, if you're familiar with Sauvignon Blancs, this should meet all the char char characteristics of a Sauvignon Blanc. That's mild. I don't love that one. Yeah, that's, it's this cool. must be the grassy one it I was talking about. This is I was just gonna guess. Yeah, it's very mild. A little earthy, a little on the grassier side. Some people like that, but we had, we had I, talked about that. Yeah, a little I was bit. Say, it's very hard. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Although it is a Sauvignon Blanc, it's hard to classify it as one when you don't have any citrus in it. Yeah, I don't. I don't love it. You do not get a lot of citrus on this. None. Mm -mm. But see, this is why I do the show because I'm trying something new tonight. I'm not going to be quite as harsh. I see, I see a purpose for this particular white and some type of a really spicy sure. type food maybe because mm -hmm. um, you want something to cut it. Right. Um, 
but there's not a lot of flavor profile in that. I feel like the green bottle was a warning that yeah. it's <laughs> going to be more grassy. Maybe something with a giraffe <laughs> on it is not a good idea for a wine. South African. But uh, yeah, once again, it, it's not bad, at least in my opinion, it's not bad, but no, it's not no. characteristic of a, of a true Southern yeah. wine. It's not my thing, but it's not bad. Okay. It's drinkable. I also wouldn't it's, turn it down. Right. Okay. <laughs> I don't well, if know. You, if you have nothing else to drink, it's... Uh, if it was, I have yeah. sent Sauvignon Blancs back, so I don't know if I would. I might. Well, if I was in a restaurant and they had other options, but if I was just at someone's house, and didn't. <laughs> I wouldn't be. I wouldn't turn it down. You know, it's funny because they say it's perfect as an aperitif, and uh, I don't know if it's sweet enough to be uh, an aperitif. No, it's not sweet at all. Like maybe some white cheeses or cheeses it might be okay with, but maybe uh, a nice cream brie, something of that nature. But yeah, I I think if you did a blind taste test with me, I wouldn't even know that is a Sauvignon Blanc. I might agree with you on that, and that's, uh, you know, we've done a few of those on the show, and uh, I might agree with you. I don't know if I picked that out as a Sauvignon Blanc either. And I know you guys, you know, you like a big, powerful, citrusy Sauvignon Blanc. We do. So, I, well, we finish up with the uh, Simply Naked, which really should be a real citrusy one. Um, it's a California, uh, I'm sorry, it's a New Zealand one, a New Zealand, as Sally knows, that's where your favorite Sauvignon Blancs come from. It has yeah. to be from Marlboro. <laughs> We're pretty exclusive on that. <laughs> that is pretty funny. You know what? Generally, I would wait a little bit longer, but because we had a bad experience with that long neck, <laughs> uh, we, we have to make that up. So okay. I have to make it up to the ladies. Let's go right to the Simply Naked right now. We can come back to these that later sounds on. Sounds good. Because I can't, I can't start talking about lobster again without a bad taste in your mouth from the previous <laughs> one. Or salivating. Simply Naked has been around a while. This is a relatively a, a new import here in Connecticut. I know it's available in most stores. Um, but it's a reasonable price point and this should pop like you've been waiting for. You had mentioned the price point on the... The long neck one. was between 10 and 12. Oh, okay. And the first one was 13. Yeah, 15. the first one actually is the most expensive on the table tonight. The uh, Simply <laughs> Naked is between uh, $8.99 and $10.99. Wow. That's probably the most fruity tonight. That's, uh, that's right up where we should be heading for a Sauvignon Blanc. Very lemony. Yeah, actually, that's one of the tasting notes. Tangerine and lime, uh, but also pineapple, which I do get a little bit of the pineapple in there. You do? Yeah. Out of the three tonight, I think this is the most fruit forward of the three. It is. It's almost sweet. I can see that. But not, nothing really big, powerful with the grapefruit. Nothing really uh, citrusy. Even with this one. No. I agree. Yeah. But I think if we had to choose between the three tonight, I think we'd be sort of stuck between the Grenache and the Simply Naked mm -hmm. for the best flavor profile. So back to the lobster again, because, you know, <laughs> this, I know you guys at, at, at home watching this us. are seeing this lobster. And we will be eating that to your jealousy, obviously. And uh, there's a few other questions I want to know because... You know, I love lobster. Not yeah. as much as Carrie does. I know, Carrie, you're watching. I know you love lobster. I prefer it done for me. I don't like making the mess, picking up the lobster. Yeah, I don't like killing anything either. Yeah, it's, it's not pretty. It's an hypocrisy. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I've always been fascinated. Like, lobster's been around a while, but how did some pilgrim decide this looks like an interesting thing to eat? Like, there must have been a lot of trial and error before the actual perfect lobster was boiled. Or they must have just been really hungry. I don't know. Yeah, that's that's possible, but it's just not something you would generally eat if you yeah, saw in, in the book, ocean. They have the uh, William Bradford described how they were starving and all they had to eat was lobster. So did, did they eat them like raw, or did they just cook them on the fire? They didn't really describe that, and I didn't. Probably didn't want to know. It. <laughs> yeah, but uh, he didn't seem very thrilled about it. So when you were in the process of writing this book, and you decided to write this book. Into what area did you first start with? Like you said, this is where I'm going to start with my lobster roll book, and I'm going to end up here. Or was this sort of like a mixture of different areas in, the, in New England? Uh, it's just a mixture of different areas in New England. So I've been doing the blog for a while, so I've been to a lot of places all over New England. And <coughs> I just kind of picked um, not the 40 best, but necessarily, but uh, 40 that I liked in all different regions of New England. So I tried to get something from each state, uh, different varieties of lobster rolls so that everybody could have something they like in there. So my question is, does Maine make the best lobster rolls? Uh, most of the best lobster rolls are from Maine, but not all of the best. Interesting. And not every lobster roll in Maine is good. Well, I could understand Not that. by a long shot, no. 
Where, where have you had your best lobster roll? I have to say, I still can't believe that I haven't taken your advice and gone over the mountain. Isn't what is it called? Cold water, deep water, deep lobster. water lobster. Um, so I've not done that. I would say I have had some very, very good ones in Newport. Um, the mooring has a very nice one. Yep. And my favorite because it's down and dirty, cheap and good is the the twin lobster roll uh, deal down at First Beach. Yeah, East, I, I East think speech. I think you're right, Indy, and I think Sally would appreciate. It's just plain simple. It's got the small hot dog roll buttered. Yep. And grilled. Yep. Mm -hmm. Just right with just the right amount of lobster. You're looking at a two or three bite lobster roll. Right. And you get two of them. I think it's just the right amount and the flavor is good. It is. And I, I think it's like twelve ninety nine for the two. It used it? to be, I think, nine ninety nine. It's crept up wow. over the years. It's still a great price yeah, though. It is. It is. And and they're not it's not chintzy on the lobster. It's no. a decent amount. It's not overstuffed obviously for the right. price point, but it's it's good. And it is the hot dog rolls, but you're at a little snack oh, sure. you're at a snack Most shack. Of hot dog rolls. Yeah. <laughs> so it is very good. But uh, not uh, not as much experience as Sally, but uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be on the quest now that I own her book. <laughs> I get to look for all the good ones. So I, you might have already said this. How many lobster rolls have you consumed? Uh, <laughs> not, not, not obviously. It's just going to be a rough estimate. I haven't done the count in a while, but at last count it was around 220 different. And then that was about a year ago. So wow. I'd say I'm probably around 250 now. That's ish. great. So I, as I think as, as we're the mid, sort of the midway point here on the show, which wine do you think would pair best with this lobster that we're about to try? I know it's a tough one. Well, I think because we can take long neck out of the equation, yeah. it is between the guanac and the simply naked. I'm going to go ahead and say simply naked because it's the most kind of lemony, citrusy, yeah. and that usually goes well with lobster. I think okay, I would agree. So the two, two of you will go with the simply naked. I'm going to go back but to But just guanac. to drink, I might even drink the first one. I'm not sure. Now, we've had experience, you know, I've done a show with uh, the Manchester Community College uh, chef program. We have eaten on this show. Yes. We have not had any spillage on our clothes. <laughs> Hopefully, this will not be the first show where we have a spillage on our clothes. Hopefully. Now, not to be uh, snobbish at all, but is there any proper way to hold the lobster roll or just <laughs> grab it in your hand? Like I said, I don't take it too seriously. <laughs> I just get in there. <laughs> Oh, I, I have to ask you, do you have a price point where you just say that's a ridiculous price point for a lobster roll? I'm going to be honest with you, I don't. Because really? Because I've encountered some really <laughs> great ones that were, which you might consider pretty high, up to around $25. But if it's at a sit-down restaurant, it has other things, it can sometimes be worth it. And I find that the price point isn't always an indicator for how good it is or how bad it is. Like sometimes if something's really inexpensive, you assume it's going to not be very good and be frozen. But what is the what is the best price lobster roll you've had and what is the most expensive? Well, one of the best price, uh, a couple of them actually, there's one up in Sullivan, Maine. It's also the furthest north I've ever gone for a lobster roll. It's north of Acadia. Wow. They have a two for $10. All right, there you go. And Twin it's awesome. fresh picked. It's owned by a lobsterman. They pick it every day. It's amazing. So I'd say that's, that's the best deal I've ever found. And that's pretty far up there. It's really far up there. It's like a seven-hour yeah. drive? Uh, Six, seven hours? Plus, because yeah. it's above Acadia. It's about seven, eight hours to Acadia. And then, so yeah. Well, folks, as I've told you in the past, white wines generally go very well with seafood. So actually, I'm going to go first. You go so I'm going gonna, gonna to see if this is going to work on the camera. And if it does and I don't spill, they'll try it next. Okay. Now, right off the bat, as I would think that you would expect, Sally, you get the seafood, you get the, you get the, you get the ocean in that lobster. Mm -hmm. Some of them bury the flavor right. with a lot of fillings. That's actually pretty good. Let's see how it goes with this wine. It goes very well. All right. I think it, it's, that's the Granat. That's the Granat. I did not spill. <laughs> so, ladies, if you want to try, you're more than welcome to. All right, get in there. But I love the uh, the saltiness and the seafoodiness of that, uh, the flavor of that. Okay, I need to I need, I need to watch from the uh, the expert here. <laughs> okay, I did spill a little bit. But That's okay. Not Somebody will eat myself. that. <laughs> now, what's great about a lobster roll, and I'm sure some of you have had this same experience. Sometimes they're so stuffed mm. with celery and lettuce that they can be kind of messy to eat. Now, this is just what you would call a more traditional lobster, right? It's just got the lobster, a little bit of seasoning, a little bit of uh, 
a flavor in there, but there's not a lot of frills in there at all. Yeah. Doing shows like this, when you're doing it sort of live filming and you're eating, sometimes could work and sometimes can't work. And a lobster roll, I knew from the start, was going to be a little on the risky side. <laughs> but we all look good. We all look good. So far. So far. Now, when the camera stops rolling and we finish this wine afterwards, people, I'll let you know next uh, month how it worked out. Yeah. But, uh, I, I really sort of like the Sauvignon Blanc. And generally, when I do have a lobster roll, which isn't as frequently as my wife, Carrie, because um, I prefer whole belly clams, um, ah. I'm usually always drinking a white wine, whether mm -hmm. it's a Sauvignon Blanc, Chardonnay, but Ooh. not a buttery Chardonnay, <laughs> or a Spanish white or an Italian white, which uh, to me is a little bit on the more milder side. Yeah. And I would only, I don't think I could drink a red wine with a lobster roll. I mean, can I you do could. that? I just don't know that it's ideal. Yeah, I agree. I don't know if that's something you would want to do. I can enjoy a mixed drink with a lobster roll. Can you? Yeah, like a lemonade or some kind of cucumber based thing. Oh, cucumber based. That might be interesting. Yeah, I think that can be good. So. Now, do you plan on doing anything else after or as a follow up like lobster rolls part do? Like maybe more a, lobster rolls? Like maybe uh, different styles in other parts of the country? I know you're from Maryland originally, I believe, right? Delaware. Delaware. So, like, what do they consume out there? Crab cakes. Well, that's another it whole art form. It is the land of the crab. It are is a land of the crab. Are you going to start I kind of feel like if I had stayed in Delaware, I would have maybe the quest done for the whole best crab cake thing. The quest they for, also yeah. vary quite widely. Uh, if I lived in the South, I would do pulled pork. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Gwinnock. So we're taking a bite right, I'll then? Do yeah, actually, if you don't want to take a bite, you can maybe just pick up a piece of the lobster and try it that way. I That's might true. Do that. I don't make much of a mess. <laughs> Put some on a cracker. I will say, though, this is uh, an interesting way to uh, both talk about your book and appreciate both lobster and wine. Sure. Two of my favorite things. Of my three, favorite of my things. Fa three of our favorite things. Book, lobster, and wine. I was about to say, what's the third? Book. <laughs> You know, I still have that bite off of the guanac, which is nice. I think it's definitely a little, I think it works well with the lobster. I, I agree. That's why I'm I sticking think, to that one. I think I would agree with you on that. Unlike the Simply Naked, which sort of just rested there sort of nonchalantly, I think <laughs> the guanac sort of uh, boosts the flavor a little bit of the lobster. It so does. I like the guanac with the lobster better than I like the I do. It's another fat, well, this is why I've been doing the show for so long. It's another classic example of when you eat certain types of food and you pair it with the right kind of wine. Yeah. It really sort It doesn't taste kind of watered down anymore. <laughs> it tasted almost just too light. Now it doesn't. But, you know, you're going to be watching this show, uh, I think, in August, I believe. And, you know, summer's still going strong. It's still hot. So this will give you some idea that, you know, read Sally's book. Grab yourself your lobster roll from your local place here, whatever you want to do. And try a Sauvignon Blanc. And I think... If you don't try one of these, something on more like, what is it that you guys like? Which is the brand? Oyster, Oyster Bay. Bay. Oyster Bay, which I'm sure everybody's familiar with. I mean, Oyster Bay is certainly a very citrusy, powerful yeah. Sauvignon Blanc. Very There's citrusy. also a lobster reef from the same region. It's called Lobster Reef Sauvignon Blanc. And I like to drink that one with lobster mostly for obvious reasons. <laughs> <laughs> is there a lobster on the label? The, there's a lobster on the label. It's called Lobster Reef. Yeah. It just feels right. <laughs> Now, your book is available both locally on Amazon, everywhere right now? Yeah, locally uh, at Barnes & Noble here in West Hartford and on Amazon oh, and on my great. website, lobstergal.com. Oh, lobstergal.com. Please remember that one. Yep. So lots of different places. And, um, <clears throat> excuse me, have you thought of, of this since the summer's not sort of winding down, but still in full swing? I said you're off. Where are you off to? Um, you just came back from? I just came back from Booth Bay Harbor. Booth Bay Harbor. Mm -hmm. Are there any other jaunts? Are you, obviously, you're still eating lobster rolls, but I mean... Yeah, I mean, I like to kind of make a trip up to Acadia once during the summer, that region, down east region, and do a mid-coast, which was the Booth Bay region, and do some beach trips overnight to the lower levels of Maine and Cape Cod. North Shore of uh, Boston's really a hotbed for lobster greatness, too. Is it really? Yeah. All right. Guys, you can see what a tough life the three of us have. <laughs> Drinking wine, eating seafood, whether it's Newport or it's Booth Bay or it's Maine, it's, it's, it's a tough job, but <laughs> we all have to do, do it, it, right? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, like I said, so I really appreciate the fact that um, you not only wrote the book on lobster rolls, because I hear so much about lobster rolls from Carrie. Every time we go somewhere, i got to try lobster roll, i got to try lobster <laughs> roll. And it's just, I usually it's not something that I would go to right away because I find it sort of a one-hit wonder. Because I know you get all that filler. You got the French fries or the coleslaw. Yeah. And to me, it's just like, it's just, you get a small portion of the lobster roll and everything else is a filler. 
you know, I sort of like a more uniform meal. Mm -hmm. But I, I've sort of been swayed over the last year or so about a good lobster roll. And uh, if it's really good, it's a great meal and it's very refreshing. Yeah, I didn't write about any that weren't good on their own because I don't even eat the sides. They, you don't have enough stomach space left for more. <laughs> Which is actually good because you've got to save some room for the wine. You do. You do. <laughs> <laughs> so, and the three wines we've had tonight, I think we can all agree that the long neck, and I think I'm going to go back for one more sip before we wrap up. I think we have to. I think yeah. we're good with the lobster. Just actually, you're it'll be better. You're absolutely, your glass is empty. And this is another example where a wine that doesn't taste good on its own might actually taste good with the right kind of food. This sort of overpowers the lobster a little bit to me, but don't let that cloud your own personal opinion. We're still chewing. We're all over. <laughs> One minute. But it does taste better than it did the first time. I would agree. It tastes yeah. better. Yeah. You know, it's on its own. It's, it's in the, once again we do this so many times on this show and. Um, if you're just drinking wine without pairing it with something, it will taste completely different than when you're actually pairing it with either some form of food, whether it be seafood or meat. This is another example of the flavor profile of the wine changes dramatically right. with the seafood. The one I liked best alone was the one I liked least with the lobster. So uh, there's no bombs here tonight because I can't say they're bombs <laughs> because they, they tasted differently with the food. Yeah. So I'm not going to give anything a complete thumbs down. I mean, we didn't like the long neck at first because there wasn't anything yeah. to eat with it. It was just, eh, you know, it's, it's, it's okay. But with the lobster, it definitely improved. It did. Mm -hmm. it did. Simply Naked probably was our favorite to drink right off the start. Yes. But mm -hmm. to me, my favorite with the lobster was the Grenache. I think we're in agreement. Agreed. So we're all in agreement there. Yeah, oddly enough. With three on the show, that very rarely happens. Hey, really? cheers, guys. That cheers. was awesome. Cheers. And, uh, you know, I just want to say, Sally, that, you know, I've known you for a while now. India, I've known you for a while. And uh, it's just so exciting to know somebody who's wrote a book on lobster rolls, especially since we all love the beach so much. I think that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> New England's great. It is, it is great. You know, I, I'm a New England touring thrower. So I want to thank all of you guys for watching this show. And I want to thank Sally. I want to thank India. And uh, the summer's winding down, so enjoy the rest of your summer. And uh, you can check out Two Guys and a Lot of Wine on whctv.org or on demand. Check out our Facebook. And until next time, please keep me, Sally, all of us, Jim, in your wine cellar. <laughs>